Have, you ever, have any of you ever heard of Stephen Langley? Anyone? I'll tell you why you haven't heard of him. Have you ever heard of the Kitty Hawk brothers? Everybody here has, right? Everyone. Stephen Langley was really the first person to have a successful flight on an airplane. He did that in May 6, 1896. And then a few years later, he, had, he did this other launch in front of scientists and the press, and it was kind of like a news release, probably similar to what we have today, and there's all sorts of people there. And this machine never flew, and it went right into the Potomac River. He was scorned by other scientists, heavily criticized by the public, and ridiculed by the press. He kind of died a broken man. A few, 10 days later, then the Kitty Hawk brothers did the same thing and flew and made a successful flight. But that, 19, that plane that he flew in 1903 is in the Smithsonian Institute, and you can see it today. But what's interesting about this is 10 years after the fact that that went into the river, a very accomplished pilot got into that same plane and flew it longer than the Kitty Hawk's flight. Same plane, different pilot. But the, article, the author of the article said, you know, if he would have just persevered a little longer, his name would be known today. And I thought, you know, we get so discouraged so quickly, don't we? We just get discouraged in our relationships. We just get discouraged at work. We get discouraged here at church. And what do we do? We walk. We walk. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? How quickly we give up. That's exactly why Jesus did what he did today in today's gospel. He took three of his closest disciples and appeared to them. Now they knew exactly, when they see a cloud in those times, they knew a cloud led the Israelites out of the promised land, so they knew what that meant. That meant the divine being, it meant God. And when that cloud came over them and that cloud spoke, to Jesus, who they knew as a man, and called him my beloved son, they now knew that this man that was walking with them was divine as well. They knew that. Jesus didn't want them to walk away when they witnessed that, just a few short time after. Discouragement, my friends, it's a powerful, powerful thing in our lives. How do we deal with it? How do we deal with it? It's something all of us have to deal with. There was a father and a teenager, and their relationship was toxic. Toxic, from the age 10 on, until he graduated from high school. I know that's probably very unique. After graduation, the father asked the son to go on a four-day mountain hiking trip, of which they camped and hiked for four straight day, three straight days. It changed the relationship. They talked like they never did, and they understood each other. And that mountain, climbing that mountain together was a turning point in their lives. And when that boy, started facing in college and years after, he started facing adversity in his life and challenges, he said to himself, I need to remember the mountain. And he said, I'd call my father. Because he would understand. 
And for us, my friends, it's the same analogy. Our living God needs to be very real. And when he's real, he'll understand us. He'll understand us. See, that father and son had a life-giving relationship. And that boy never forgot it. See, when we have a positive, life-giving relationship, it gives, it breathes life, regardless of our situation. Regardless. And when our God is very real, it breathes life into, in us. And that's why Jesus appeared to them. He knew he could still breathe life into those disciples after they witnessed that on the cross. And he can do the same for you and I, my friends, when we are faced with those difficulties, the adversities, anxieties of life that affect all of us, that affect all of us. What we crave most in those times is a life-giving, transforming relationship that will breathe life into each one of us. And our living God will do exactly that. God bless you.